scripture reading this morning is on the back of your bulletin, Acts 11, 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Java and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, "Then God has given even to the Gentiles repentance that leads to life. Holy Spirit. We open our minds, we open our spirits to hear what you have to say, to see what you desire to show us. Amen. About 50 years ago, a small group of people at a Mennonite church in Hagerstown had some disagreements with the larger congregation and the leaders, and were going to start a new congregation. I wonder how it came to be that the two groups believed they couldn't remain together. Maybe they needed an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Or maybe they needed a vision like Peter and the Gentiles in the story that you just heard from Acts 11. But that's Hagerstown, 50 some years ago, rather distant, rather impersonal. So let's get a little more personal. Have you had, have we had, an encounter with God's Spirit like Peter and the Gentiles? As a middle aged seminary student, I was asked to serve as a spiritual director for any college student that wanted. And during a one-on-one -on -one session, a student confided of having same-sex attraction. He talked about struggling with his thoughts and his desires and openly shared about the challenges of his relationship with God. Maybe 
God was opening for me and for the student to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit like Peter and the Gentiles. But again, that's rather distant. It's me, it's not you. It's a student, somebody else, not very personal. So again, let's get personal. Have we had an encounter with God's Spirit that's anything like Peter and the Gentiles? The sons and spouses of a woman dying of cancer had tried numerous times to convince her that she needed to say certain things and believe certain things before she died so that eternity with God would be secure. With tears, they strongly encouraged me as a hospice chaplain to convince her to say certain things and to believe certain things before it was too late. Maybe God was preparing us all to have an encounter with God's Spirit, like the encounter that Peter and the Gentiles had. But again, that's rather distant. It's me, it's a woman, somebody in Washington County, Maryland. Have we had, have you had an encounter with God's Spirit like Peter and the Gentiles? So here's my summary. Here's my version of Peter and the Gentiles' encounter with God God's spirit. Peter was just minding his own business. He was having a little prayer and meditation time. He saw animals and reptiles and birds. And then he heard a voice telling him, eat it, any of it, all of it. Now, Peter knew as a good Jew that God's law prohibited God's people from eating any of what he had seen. So three times he protested, no way, I'm kosher. I intend to stay that way. I have never eaten anything considered unclean. Peter had been taught that God's people are strictly commanded to eat some food and avoid eating other food totally forbidden to eat that food forbidden by the commandments would have been like a slap in God's face. So Peter strongly refused three times. No way. I'm kosher. I intend to stay that way. Just after Peter's vision of the forbidden food, three Gentiles asked Peter to go with them, which meant Peter would have become unclean. If Peter associated with those unclean Gentiles again, it would have been like a slap in God's face. But Peter went. Why? Peter reported to his critics, the Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. No more. Them and us for Peter. No more Jew and Gentile slave and free, male and female, no more my denomination and all those others, no more whites and people of color, no more my group that believes like me and votes like me, and then those others. No more. 
them and us. No more distinction in God's family. Once again, God was stretching, nudging, expanding Peter's view of God and other people. And this wasn't the first time Peter had been stretched. You remember these? Well, I've got more. <laughs> balloons. I've used balloons before to try to help us all understand the Holy Spirit. And here I go again. Now, if I were a little more imaginative, maybe, or creative, I might have come up with something different. But here we are. I didn't. So here we go. If Peter is like the balloon and the breath of God's Spirit fills and stretches and changes him. Peter was stretched when God called him from fishing for fish to fishing for people. That's in the beginning of the Gospels, sort of the beginning of Peter's story in his relationship with Jesus. So that stretched him. Peter was stretched. When Jesus called him from hiding out in fear after Jesus' resurrection, or, yeah, I'm sorry, after Jesus' crucifixion, he and the other disciples were afraid. They were hiding. God's Spirit sort of nudged and called him out of that hiding. And in the beginning of the book of Acts, we have Peter standing before a crowd of people, not hiding in a room somewhere, saying, this is God's spirit that's going on. It stretched him again. Peter was filled and stretched with God's spirit and stretched again to witness even if he was arrested and flogged again. And now here we are again. In Acts 10 and 11, Peter is stretched so far by God's Spirit that what happens? <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> what explodes is Peter's restricted belief. of who receives the gift of God's Spirit. What explodes, stretches, 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 and finally, boom, it explodes, is his restricted belief of who receives the gift of God's Spirit. No more us and them. Before Pentecost, before this vision, before this encounter with the Holy Spirit, P Peter believed just Jews would receive the gift of God's Spirit. But here were the Gentiles receiving the gift of God's Spirit, and boom, Peter's belief that God distinguished one from the other was shattered in pieces. In Peter's words, if then God gave them the same gift that he gave us. When we believed in the Lord Jesus, who was I to hinder God? But again, that's a couple thousand years ago, a little bit impersonal for us. So we need to ask, well, do I hinder God? And God's spirit by being judgmental about who has or has not received God's spirit. Peter wasn't the only Jew to be stretched beyond the exploding point. Peter was confronted and criticized for associating with those Gentiles by fellow Jews. They believed strongly that God demanded circumcision as a sign of the covenant. 
But after they heard the story, after the Holy Spirit stretched them, they concluded also, then God has given even to those Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. So back to those two Mennonite groups in Hagerstown. If they have a restricted belief that only their group will receive the gift of God's Spirit, God wants to stretch and perhaps explode that belief. So like Peter and the Jews, they conclude, God has given even to those other Mennonites the Holy Spirit and repentance that leads to life. And back to the young man struggling with sexuality and me as his spiritual director. If I have a restricted belief that only people like me will receive the gift of God's Spirit, I believe God wants to stretch and explode that belief. So like Peter and the Jews, I conclude, God has given even to those others the gift of the Holy Spirit and repentance that leads to life. And the sons and the spouses of the dying woman, she died before saying or doing what they hoped and prayed and encouraged. After her death, a friend gave them a book about the wideness in God's mercy, as the hymn says. They did have a Peter and Gentile-like encounter with God's Spirit, I believe, as they reviewed their mother's life. They began to realize that perhaps mom had been affected by God's Spirit, they remembered mom was the one who helped any family member, anyone in need. Mom was the one who sacrificed for them. Maybe God had given even to mom the Holy Spirit and repentance that leads to life. Again, let's get personal. What about us? If we have a restricted belief that only people like us, only people who believe what I do, only people who live like I live, only people who meet my belief of who will and who will not receive the gift of God's Spirit, I'm convinced. God wants to stretch and explode that view. So that we, like Peter and the Gentiles, conclude God has given even to those others the gift of the Holy Spirit and repentance that leads to life. Maybe we're the one who need to repent that we have hindered God's Spirit and opposed God's Spirit. Each Sunday, I trust that we remember God so loved the world. God loves people in Australia and Asia and Africa, and Europe, and China, and Russia, and the Arctics, North and South America, the world. So let's be reminded of what the Holy Spirit taught Peter and wants to teach us as we sing number 397. And again, the words will be up front, or you can use your books if you choose, 397. I 
invite you to stand if you'd like to sing. God loves all his many people. God loves all his many people with surpassing love. Blesses all that's his own children, cares for everyone. Come to him, friend, come to him, friend, come receive his joy. Things no less forever, I'll receive his joy. I wants you to come to him now, wants you as his child. Come on, our friend, who will refuse his feet. Come to him, friend, come to him, friend, come receive his joy. Things don't last forever, only sin is born. In the Lord is our salvation, in the Lord is love. Come, my friend, to die beneath me, and sin is born. Come to him, friend, come to him, friend, and sin is born. Before you sit down, 